The first reading today, St. Paul, in speaking to the Galatians, tells them that he is shocked that they have gone so quickly to a different gospel. He reminds them that there is no other. But there were people who were preaching an idea of Jesus that wasn't quite the truth. There were these people that went to the Galatians who called themselves super apostles. And they told the Galatians that the men all had to be circumcised. They had to become Jewish before they could become Christian. And they had some other things based on that that they were teaching the people. And the people bought into that idea. It's like, well, this makes sense. Jesus was Jewish and the early Christians were all Jewish, the first Christians, so therefore that's what we have to do too. And this is the point St. Paul is getting at. It's a different gospel. It's preaching a Jesus who's different from the one that St. Paul preached. A lot of it's the same, but not everything. And St. Paul then, to make the point explicitly clear, says, if anyone preaches to you a gospel other than the one that we preached, let a curse be upon him. What it literally says in Greek is, let him be anathema, or as many people know it in Latin, anathema sit. Let him be anathema. Let him be cut off. Let him be accursed. And then he repeats it, in case we miss the point. So now we're dealing with this in our own day. Yes, we could look at people like the Mormons or we could look at the Jehovah's Witnesses and they've got an entirely different gospel idea. But now we need to talk about Catholics because we've got all kinds of people that are trying to play games with the scriptures. You don't really need to believe this. That was 2,000 years ago. Come on, it's the 21st century. Let's get with it. St. Paul goes on then to say, look, I want you to know that the gospel I preach was not of human origin. It's the word of God. So we need to ask ourselves, do we really believe that? Are these just sacred writings? If that were the case, what's the difference between that and the Quran, which the Muslims believe to be sacred writings? What's the difference between that and the, whatever they call it, Haggad Vedavida, that the, the Hindus would consider to be sacred writings? Or the Buddhist writings or anything else that they would consider to be sacred? This is the Word of God. The Word of God is not just simply what is written down in the Scriptures. The Word of God is a person, just as truth is a person. We're not just simply talking about logical propositions. We're talking about a person. And this is the person of whom St. Paul says Jesus Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. He is God which means he cannot change. Which means that what is in Scripture cannot change. The truth is the truth is the truth. And it cannot change. Just because we have decided that being woke is somehow the in thing. This is vogue now. Sorry. It's garbage. It is absolutely contrary to the Word of God. You have some of the unfortunate souls who want to be able to try and justify some of their immorality. They say things like, oh, what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah had nothing to do with sexual sin. It was a lack of hospitality. They weren't being very nice to the visitors. That was the problem. 
like, well, <laughs> there was a bigger problem than that. And then they look at St. Paul's letter to the Romans in the first chapter and they say, well, that's not really what he meant. It's like, really? What did he mean? They come up with all kinds of goofball ideas like, well, there was no word back then for homosexual. Like, what do you mean there wasn't a word? For it? It's Greek. That's where it comes from. But St. Paul didn't even use that word. He talks about men who trade in relations with women for other men. He didn't even use the word. But that's inconvenient. It's more convenient to try and tap dance around this and find some argument about it. How about let's take the word of God for what it is and quit trying to change it, quit trying to find another way. Look at what's going on in Rome right now. It's bad enough that we have a document that came out saying, oh, we can bless these kinds of unions. It's like, no, we can't. But now with this synod thing going on, the Pope decided, well, the hot button topics we're gonna to take away from the synod, we're gonna put them into study groups. So starting last February and going until next June, they have these study groups about women's ordination and morality and the Eucharist, things like this. And the group that's dealing with some of the things about morality came out with a document that they presented the other day. And it was saying, essentially, forget the objective teachings of the church. Morality simply has to be based on a lived experience. Really. In other words, what you think is moral is okay for you. What I think is moral is okay for me. There are no objective standards anymore. Sorry, this is a gospel different from the one that was preached. Anathema, sit is all you can say to that nonsense. It's garbage, and it must be rejected. These are hard things for us to think about. And of course, it's a whole lot easier if you want to water down the gospel, because then you can make the gospel say whatever you want it to say. You just pick and choose the passages that you like. We heard the one today about loving God and loving neighbor, but when it actually comes to self-sacrifice to do that, oh, no, 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 that, we, don't, we don't want that. When it comes to justifying why I can hate the person who lives next door because they're such a jerk, well, then I can ignore and love my neighbor because Jesus only meant that for people who were nice. No, that's not what he said. But you see how easy it is just to tap dance around the truth or even change the truth using the same words but meaning something entirely different by them. We need to take the Lord at his word because his word is the word of God. And do we really believe that? That's what we have to think about. St. Paul was adamant about this. And today we have people who are preaching a different gospel. Sadly, many of them are wearing a cassock. You can go to different Catholic churches around this diocese and you'd be surprised by what you hear. You think, I thought this was a Catholic church. But even when the stuff is coming out of Rome and it's coming from bishops and cardinals and it makes you scratch your head and say, what are we doing? We're preaching a different gospel. We're preaching something that isn't true. And we're claiming that it's pastoral because it's what people want to hear. It's nice. 
maybe those of you old enough to remember back in the 1980s when I was in the seminary, it was, well, we need to get rid of confession. We need to do general absolution. People like it. Of course they like it. They don't have to confess their sins. Kind of goes against everything, but it's a whole lot easier. That's the trash that they were teaching us. Thankfully, that's been kind of put to rest and we've moved on. But it was a false gospel back then. Now we've just got some different false gospels. But we have to be careful because we can't believe in 90% of the gospel. These things that are a little inconvenient, well, just ignore those, but I believe most of it. Well, that's like standing before the Lord on the day of judgment and saying, well, nine out of 10 commandments I was following, that's pretty good, isn't it? Well, that's better than eight out of 10, but that's not gonna cut it. He gave us 10, he wants us to follow all of them. So let's not try to justify and rationalize our way around the truth, but rather let's recognize that the gospel is the word of God. There is no other. And that we need to conform ourselves to that gospel because that gospel is the word of God. That gospel is the truth. And that gospel in the fullness of its truth is what will save our souls.